Greetings and welcome to today's 10 minute painting of a starry night sky. We're going to begin as we generally do at the base of our horizon with a large square headed brush and a mixture of primary blue and titanium white paint. Now we're using a very bright color. It almost seems counterintuitive when rendering a starry night sky as I think a lot of us innately think of that sort of scene in a very dark rich tone. However, when you add in things like stars, the galaxies, all of these light sources, it becomes such a brighter thing. And I think that's where a lot of us falter initially when rendering scenes like that. We start too dark. So here today, we're starting with a very light pigment. Then I'm taking a primary blue. I'm applying that to the top left and right hand sides of our painting. And I'm beginning to render what is called a vignette. For those of you who are unaware, a vignette is simply a darker edge that surrounds a picture, a painting, and it is rendered with the intent to move the viewer's eye in towards the center, because the viewer's eye will innately go to the brightest portion of a painting. Then I'm going to grab a mixture of Mars Black and Primary Blue, I'm applying this to the top left and top right hand corner of our painting, and I'm going to begin to blend that in just as we did the last layer. However, I'm allowing this to be a little bit messy because I need both it and the blue to be fairly wet for the next step. Now I'm taking an old square headed brush. This brush has pieces that kind of leaf off in varying directions. It's a very inconsistent brush. So when you make a tapping motion with it, it renders a litany of different implications on the canvas. This is great for things like foliage, leaves in the distance, but it's also great for creating clusters of stars. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So we're trying to create a gradient from that light pigment that we have down at the bottom up into the darker pigments that we have at the top right and top left hand corner. Except, unlike our normal softer gradients, this one is more patterned and textured. The idea is that we have all of these galaxies, all of these nebulas, these things that are occurring far, far away. They are bright, they are illuminating in the sky, and they are all this very nice rich blue pigment. But we do have that natural progression from that light blue at the bottom center to that darker pigment at the top right and left hand corner. This is a process of moving the darker pigments down into the lighter pigments and moving the lighter pigments up into the darker pigments as well. It's all about creating a nice balance. It's also a great cathartic process because it's not something you really have to worry about. It can look a little bit quote unquote messy because these galaxies, these nebulas, all of these different clusters of stars, they're going to be different levels of brightness. They're all going to be altering and changing. So there isn't really a correct aesthetic. You can have it look as interesting, as balanced as you'd like it to. Then I'm going to take that same light blue pigment that we used at the bottom of the horizon. I'm going to plot two lines of stars. These are going to really give the painting a lot of movement, a lot of direction. It's going to make it much more dynamic. And then with a smaller round headed brush, I'm using a little bit of black and I'm creating these zigzag effects in the bottom of our painting where that light blue didn't really show up. This will add to the direction of the painting. It'll be a little bit of separation. We'll cover a lot of it because it does look messy, but in the end, through the layering process, it will really help and aid the painting. With all of that said, I'm now taking my smaller round headed brush, grabbing a lot of water and a little bit of titanium white paint. I'm peeling back the bristles on my brush and I'm launching paint towards the canvas. You can make it directional by holding the brush very close to the canvas, and you can make it kind of go everywhere by holding the brush farther away from the canvas. Here I'm trying to create two lines of stars across the brighter line work that we created initially and across those black streaky lines, but I'm also moving it horizontally to ensure that we get the entirety of the sky as well. Then I'm going to take a very bright pigment. This is a mixture of the blue that we initially used at the bottom of the canvas, plus some additional titanium white. I'm creating more additional stars here at the bottom and continuing to build up that progression that we initially created when we went from the light blue to the primary blue and then to the mixture of Mars black and primary blue. 
Now we aren't finished with the sky, but I do want to let that dry so that I can go back in and add more highlights without it getting muddy. Sometimes if you add too much paint, you aren't able to really work with it and you kind of just need to let it dry before you go back to it. If you're getting frustrated, I would highly implore you to do that. In the meantime, I'm going to begin working on the mountains in the distance down at our horizon. I'm going to be using a fairly neutral gray and a medium sized square headed brush. I'm using the square headed brush because it innately has a fairly sharp edge to it and it's great for rendering rocks and sharper subjects with that sort of aesthetic. Then as we get closer in the foreground, I'm beginning to make my mountains darker and darker. I'm doing this because subjects, items, things that are far away in paintings, in pictures, in real life, they'll innately absorb and reflect more of the colors of the sky. So in our picture here, the sky, it's very bright, it's very blue, and all of those pigments, those lights, they're going to be reflected and work off of the mountains in the distance. As we get closer to us, they'll get darker and assume more of their natural colors. Then I'm taking a smaller square headed brush and I'm beginning to work a little bit of detail onto our mountains. I'm doing this by creating a bit of a tapping effect. That way we get a kind of rougher aesthetic. We get this textured aesthetic. I'm not doing a lot of brush strokes as brush strokes are fairly soft. And we're just ensuring that the tops of the mountains look a little bit harsh. They look a little bit sharp and they're brighter than the bottom portions of the mountains. Top, the top portions of the mountains will innately be a lot brighter, while the bottom portions will be a lot darker, because of course the light won't be able to get to that bottom portion as easily as it will the top portion. Here I'm brightening up some of the mountains in the background, and just adding light to the areas that seem like they will need it. Then I'm going to plot in a couple of trees here for the very, very close foreground. I'm ensuring that my trees are different heights and I'm starting with a line just to make it easy. Then I'm going to go back, grab my old square headed brush, the same one that I used for the sky. And I'm going to begin plotting on some foliage. I'm doing so with a bit of a hook shape, as you can see but we're still getting the impressions of all of those little bristles that leaf off in varying directions. I'm trying to ensure that different pieces of this foliage leaf off in A, different directions at different heights, that there are openings in different areas. I want to ensure that the trees are interesting and diverse. Trees, nature, they aren't man-made, they all have their own intricacies, and they don't look quote-unquote perfect. Right? So you want to ensure that portions of them are larger, that they're leaning in different directions, and that they're uniquely themselves. So here we're just doing more of that. I'm using more of that hook motion and just expanding upon our trees in varying ways. They're kind of connecting down there at the bottom area, and that's just to make it a little bit more cohesive and ensure that they are working the way I want. Then I'm taking the smaller square headed brush and I'm expanding upon the tops of the trees, ensuring that they are nice and sharp and they have a good guiding line throughout them. I'm also adding a couple of limbs with that as it will render a nice, very concrete aesthetic. Then I'm taking that square headed brush and I'm beginning to add some additional lighter portions to our sky. Again, we needed to let it dry before we went in and really added these standout pieces so that they didn't blend in with the pigments that were already on the canvas. Here we're using a real mixture of titanium white and primary blue, but it stands much more on the primary, or rather on the titanium white side. I'm also adding a couple of additional clusters of stars with that same brush throughout the rest of the painting. And then I'm grabbing my smaller round headed brush and I'm beginning to work on some fog down at the bottom. This is just to create a softer aesthetic. I think it will look really nice beside the sharper mountains, and it'll give it a little bit more of a mysterious depth to the piece as well. It'll also be brighter, so it'll help balance that very bright middle portion of the sky. I'm moving my brush in a rounded motion, and we're creating a soft aesthetic as it moves upwards into the mountains. It kind of dissipates and 
gets darker and darker. We get that natural transition, but it's not a soft transition. It is a sweeping. It is a moving transition. It is kind of wispy. I'm throwing it also on the other sides of my trees, and I'm also throwing a little bit of that white pigment down into our sky yet again, moving it in the same direction, and just ensuring we have everything in the values that we really want. So that is our painting at 10 minutes. Here I'm just touching it up a little bit more. As you can see, we're adding a little bit of additional highlights, a little bit of the sharper pieces down at the bottom left hand corner, but really there is our final 10 and a half minute painting. But if you enjoyed this and you'd simply like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. If you'd like to try longer lessons, I do also offer hour long tutorials where I show you things like my color palettes, how we're mixing and blending paint, all of that stuff. There is a link in the description to my Patreon where you can find that. But with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. And above all, as always, stay creative.